Hello, this is Kevin Stoda. I'm not on my porch. I'm at my sister's backyard up here in uh, southern Kansas City. I hope you guys are okay wherever you're at. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about um, a friend of mine. Uh, I, I didn't know him all that well growing up in Winsville, Missouri, uh, but he was the oldest son of um, um, a little sweetheart of mine at the time when I was about, I don't know, in fourth, fifth, sixth grade. I liked her a lot. But anyway, um, the f mother and f father were friends of my parents, so I got to know them. And to make a long story short, he spent the last uh, 30 years or so in prison. Um, he's in Potosi uh, Correctional Facility in southeastern Missouri. And uh, he calls me for free, um, again, just because I like to help and encourage people who are in prison. Um, I've had a phone conversation since I moved back to the States uh, three years ago, four years ago, with him. visited him once. Uh, it's across the state from me. And uh, he uh, did have some, uh, I don't know what he had. He could have been bipolar, it could have been whatever, but he had some uh, illnesses growing up and maybe dyslexia, had trouble in school. And like many of the people on his generation, my generation, uh, ended up in prison uh, for it when he was out on his own, he couldn't control his behavior, or wasn't taking his meds and uh, letting his anger go. Uh, you know, you can imagine energy, or anger gives you rush, but uh, he made a lot of mistakes. And so in Missouri, about three decades ago, he got his third strike and he's been in prison ever since. He's over 60 now. I don't know, about 63. Uh, maybe a little bit older uh, or less. And uh, he called me be to explain the situation now. Uh, I knew from previous calls that out in um, uh, his penitentiary, um, they hadn't been allowing people in due to COVID-19 since about March, of course. Uh, the whole thing had been locked down, uh, no visitors. People were actually, uh, for a few months, just in their cells. Um, and uh, then they were let outside slowly, a few hours a day as usual to get fresh air. It's great for them. Um, and there was hopes that maybe their prison, because there was no cases of COVID there, uh, unlike many other places across the country, especially in Texas and in some parts of the Missouri penitentiary system, there was um, no case of COVID in his prison. So there's hope that maybe after some preliminary testing this month here in July, uh, he would be able to have visitors for the first time in months. Um, you know, it's been a pretty sad situation for folks in prison. They've been in uh, some sort of solitary confinement or confinement, uh, lockdowns, you name it, for several months and they haven't seen family. And uh, uh, now uh, they've created a protocol for when visitors come uh, but it involves first having, uh, you know, them understand no touching when the uh, when people visit them and that sort of thing. Um, so it's been over five months since thousands and maybe millions of U.S. incarcerated have visited their family. And to make a long story short, he says uh, the warden and uh, prison there made a big mistake, big, horrible mistake. They allowed the transfer of a pris two prisoners who turns out had COVID from a highly uh, COVID contagious penitentiary in Missouri uh, about uh, early June. And sure enough, um, they didn't tell where the prisoners went and they didn't properly put them in isolation. They should have been in isolation for 14 days upon arrival. This was not done. They were immediately out there mingling with people. So uh, the government's getting some money together and they still haven't tested, I don't think, anybody there in that Potosi Correctional Institution. But in his block, uh, where my friend was calling from, uh, it was claimed that they were there in his block. Uh, can you get that? And he was quite upset. He was saying, you know, we're supposed to follow the law and follow the rules and they prison warden and uh, the uh, people who run the prisons 
did not follow theirs to keep them safe. Um, thousands of thousands of prisoners should be being let out in Missouri and in other states be, under this COVID duress that we're in because the prisons can't, uh, you know, keep people from getting close to each other. Uh, older prisoners like uh, him should be getting out. Um, his probation's coming up next year anyway. Um, So let's get this straight. Because of that, now they're back in the situation where uh, they're waiting for the test. They were supposed to be given last Monday. They weren't. Perhaps they'll be given this next Monday. I don't know why the tests are hanging out, but they'll need a few days to get them all tested. Uh, it won't be till August. And again, uh, they'll be lucky to have visitors in August there. Um, I really... Uh, thought of him and I'll go ahead and tell you his first name his name is Al I thought of Al today when I was driving over to my sister's house and I was listening to um, snap judgment and they had several uh, prisoners voices letters to prisoners about families who were concerned about the separation and the loneliness caused by isolation uh, cell lockdowns um, uh, and COVID-19 in prisons. Uh, most of the letters were from San Quentin, but they might as well have been from Potosi or other places because uh, here in Missouri, uh, some prisons are run amok with COVID and in Texas, you know they are. Um, America, we've been putting people in prisons for a long time. We have to learn to get them out and get them into society and we have to learn to be safe. Please protect Al and his friends and uh, don't, uh, let the situation continue where um, they look at how kids do in school and, and fail and they decide how many prisons to build. This has been going on since the 1970s, maybe since the 80s. Uh, I mean the 60s. It definitely was going on in the 80s. I read a report from Illinois back in uh, 1987. The report said that Illinois uh, was looking at third and fourth graders to see how they're doing in school. They were using this as a determinant to figure out how many prisons they needed to build within the next 10 years. Instead of investing money in education, they were building prisons. This has been happening all over the United States and we need to stop it now. We need to help people. We need to get them, if they need medication, get medication, if they need counseling, they need counseling. If they need better direction from really uh, caring people, get it. Don't fill the jails anymore. We've got thousands and thousands and thousands of old people in their 60s and 70s who were not helped throughout the 60s and 70s. There were barely any diagnosis done in school at that time. They've ended up in prison, many of them. Um, and now uh, we've got oct octogenarians in prison and they're not being let out. Uh, my friend Alice told me that, uh, and it's the case in his prison. Uh, this is pretty silly. and. You know, an example of, of what we've seen in terms of people needing to march in the streets and say enough is enough, filling the prisons, throwing the money at the police and the military, and not in education and health care and uh, social development for the country as a whole, and building infrastructure in that way. Stop making money for uh, prisons. Uh, stop making them especially for uh, private prisons and invest in resources and get these people these poor prisoners please get them um, their covid test so they can have visitors for the first time in six months please you take care of people thanks for listening to kevin soda on the porch this is not my porch and my sisters and uh greetings to all of you if you like this um type of program please uh, give me a thumbs up and also uh join the kevin soda channel become a member and uh, you pray for your uh, brothers and sisters in prisons and uh, unjustly or justly and help get them out this year. Uh, let's stop filling prisons and stop building prisons and let's start building schools, getting teachers, getting counselors, train counselors, train people to help our society become 100% better next year, 200% uh, better the year after that and thousands percent better within eight years. Let's go. America. Okay, thanks for listening and watching. Bye.